Hello, and welcome to this iSystem debug workshop video. Today we will talk about special function registers, or SFRs for short. We will take a look at the main SFR window in WinIdea, how to create a custom SFR view, how to add SFRs into the watch window, and how to initialize SFR values with a Python script. So what are special function registers? An SFR is a register within a microcontroller that controls or monitors various aspects of its function. For example, I'm sure you're familiar with GPIO control registers or processor status registers, and so on. So pretty much every register that isn't a core register is a special function register. Let's take a look at the various ways of interacting with SFRs in WinIdea. I have a sample running on an RX target, and I'm currently stopped at a breakpoint. Let's take a look at the main SFR window first. We can open it by clicking on View, Debug, SFRs, and selecting the Special Function Registers option. Now we see various register groups in a list here, and if we expand one, we can see that it contains, well, registers. On the right, you can see columns containing information about these registers. Let's expand this so we can see them a bit better. The first column here contains the value of the register in hexadecimal format by default. The next column contains values of individual fields in the register, or subregisters. You can also expand the register to show these subregisters and their values. The address column displays the location of the register, and for the subregisters, it shows the bit field, O, and length, S. Of course, there are hundreds of registers listed here, which makes finding the one you want a bit difficult. There are several ways to handle that. One of them is this filter field here. We can type in something like CPU, and now the SFR window only shows the registers or groups that have CPU somewhere in their name. Another way to find a specific register is by using the find function. We can access it by right-clicking in the SFR window and selecting find. Let's search for a register, for example, the P33 out register that controls the P33 GPIO port. There is an LED connected to that port on our board. Now, besides displaying the register values, the SFR window also allows us to change these values. I can double-click on the value of a register, or sub-register in this case, and I can select 1 and press Enter to update the value. Yep. You guessed it, we just blinked an LED. One more thing that I want to show you in the SFR window is the save function. We can save all of the values as they are displayed right now to a text or CSV file. If you have a lot of registers in the view, this could take a long time, so I'm going to filter this view a bit. There we go. Now just right click and select save. Here you can choose a file name and various options. I'm just going to go with the defaults. So let's click OK and check out the file that we generated. As you can see, we have the registers and values listed in a very human-readable way. Please note that everything will be saved exactly as displayed in the SFR window, so you can see here that we do not have the eRay group expanded, and the corresponding registers are also not listed in the text file that we generated. Now let's look at another useful way to manage the large number of SFRs. Instead of the main SFR window, we can create a custom window that contains only the registers we select, so sort of like an excerpt of the main SFR window. Let's start by creating a new SFR window by clicking on View, Debug, SFRs, and select Create New Custom. Let's name it something like LED GPIO. This will open a blank window, and all we need to create our custom view is to drag and drop items from the main SFR window into this new one. And that's pretty much it. Now we have a more manageable amount of registers in this custom window, and it functions exactly the same as the main SFR window. Another thing we can do if we need to monitor the contents of only a few registers is to just drag and drop them to the watch window. Here they behave just like any other watch item. We can see their value, which we can also change. In addition, we can change the display format to something other than hexadecimal by right-clicking on the item and selecting Format, Binary, for example. 
Now, sometimes you may want to interpret the value in a particular format, like a signed or unsigned integer, or a floating point number, and so on. To achieve this, the watch window implements a casting mechanism with a format that's familiar to all C users. We can double click on the item here to edit it, and we can do a cast just like we would in C. Let's cast this to an unsigned short, just for fun. We can see that we reduced the number of bits because this number is now interpreted as a short. You can do all sorts of casts this way with standard C expressions. Another quick thing I want to mention is that this drag and drop functionality also works with subregisters, so we can just drag a single bit out of this register here and into the watch window. Now let's take a look at controlling the SFRs through Python scripts. Sometimes you may want to initialize the SFRs to specific values, and WinIdea allows us to do that by running a Python initialization script. You can read our documentation online and write a script manually, but there is an easier way to get started. In the SFR window, we can edit a value that we want to initialize. For example, we can set this bit to 1. Now we can right-click on it and click on Create Initialization Script. Let's enter a sensible name here, like Blink LED, and save it. And if we look at that file, we can see that we generated a Python script that utilizes the iSystem Connect API to set the register values. Let's verify that it works. First, I'll manually set this bit to 0, so that we will see the value change to 1. Now let's run the script by selecting Tools, Run Script. A command line window pops up for a little while, and now we can see that the value has, in fact, changed. The scope of the auto-generated initialization script is dependent on which item in the SFR window we click on to generate it. So if we wanted to set the value of a whole register, we would right-click on the register, select Create Initialization Script, and save it. We can see here that the script now sets the value of an entire register. If we wanted to go even further, we could set the values of an entire register group by, again, right-clicking on the group we want, selecting Create Initialization Script, and saving it. We can see that the script sets the values of all the registers in the group. Of course, you might want to change only some of the registers here, but it serves as an excellent starting point for creating fairly comprehensive initialization scripts in a very simple way. That brings us to the end of this debug workshop video. To summarize, we looked at what special function registers are and what we can do with them. We looked at the main SFR window in WinIdea and its various features, demonstrated how we can create a custom SFR window that's far less cluttered, and also demonstrated the ability of the watch window to show register contents in various numerical formats. At the end, we looked at a simple way of creating a Python initialization script, which saves us from the effort of having to write it manually. Thank you for your attention, and see you next time!